we're starting to do the gable ends now. And what I'm doing here is I'm closing the corner because my main posts are right behind this wood. And so I could have wrapped Tyvek around them and I actually thought about doing that, but to tell you the honest truth, I forgot. So what I'm doing now is I'm closing the corner and this will be fine. So you can see I have this filler piece and then the starter piece is overlapping this joint. And when I put on the trim pieces, the trim pieces, this piece is going to come to the end and this piece will butt up to it. And that's closing the corner. Um, it's actually pretty watertight. So this is how we're starting off and now we're going to go down the line. Okay, let, let me explain a little bit what I'm doing here, the method to my madness. As you can see those boards, when they hit that nailing strip up there, they're not the same length. They're offset by one inch. And if you take a look at that barn, I didn't want to break the board on that tie beam because I just didn't want to joint on the tie beam. Um, just because in case something leaks at some point I just don't want it leaking right against one of the main members of the structure so I've got to go all the way up the gable on these gable ends and so I'm gonna to have to splice and you can do that several ways and I wasn't really sure exactly how I wanted to do it but if you look at that I've only got one nailer between the steel and the tie beam and that's at three feet I could have put two in there but I didn't I only put one and the reason I did that is because I'm going to put my wood stove on that wall, the chimney is going to come out that wall, and so is the venting for the forge. And so I kind of know how I'm going to do that, and I put that nailing strip where I did for those reasons. So that being said, I really didn't want to splice, you know, kind of at eye level on the wall, so I wanted it up higher and I can't splice on the tie beam where I don't want to and so then that left me the first splice point is where those boards end. Well, that's really not conducive to staggering your splices because I'm out of options. My boards are only eight feet long. So then I was faced with, okay, all the splices are gonna be on that one strip then and they're all gonna be going horizontally across the barn. 
and I really didn't want your eye to draw to that so I thought by staggering the joints that it would muddle it up enough to where your eye may not be drawn right to that straight line going across the barn. Um, I'm not sure if I'm digging it or not. It's probably going to be a pretty big pain when I go to put the top boards on the gable side. But we'll see how it works out. Um, I'm 45 in the splice and um, that's pretty typical and that's pretty standard. On the front side of the barn, I'm not sure if I'm going to do this. Um, I may dream up a little bit something else that's actually kind of a decorative element and serve the purpose to break the boards and start a new board. And so I've kind of got an idea for that and I think I'm going to try that on the front. But we'll just keep going this way on the back. At least it's on the back side and if it ends up being stupid, <laughs> then not too many people are going to see it. So. Anyways, that's kind of why I'm doing that, um, and I'm sure some of you were looking at the tops of those boards going, what is he doing? Let's keep on going.